electrocardiogram. Now, how do we spell that? Electrocardiogram. Now, how does EKG fit into that one? Because the word cardio is spelled with a C. Yes. What happened? Is that the French or German? Not bad. It is German. German. Kind of Dutch. German, Dutch. Who cares? And you know why? Because electrocardiograms or ECGs, uh, EKGs, were invented by a German Dutch scientist named Dr. Eindhoven. Eindhoven. Invented by Dr. Einhoven. It's like combination between Einstein and Beethoven. Mm -hmm. Einhoven. <laughs> That name is not unnecessary. It's necessary to know because it's associated with certain things we do with electrocardiograms. The real way to call EKG in the United States should be ECG. But EKG has been going on for so long, it's stuck. So everybody calls it EKG, ECG. It's like a whole big major mess and a to-do out there. Whether you call it EKG or ECG doesn't matter as long as you know what it is that you're doing. Now let's first define the word electrocardiogram. Electro, I like to draw pictures. See that little lightning bolt over there? Mm -hmm. That would be electricity. Yes. Cardio, that would be this. The heart. See, the heart. Mm. <laughs> and gram. Gram is an interesting, not just a medical term, but it simply, you know what I'm going to put? I'm going to put a little picture here, like this. And you guys can tell me where you've seen this little symbol before. Have you seen this little symbol before? Mm -hmm. Who owns a smartphone? Everybody. Everybody? Yes. <laughs> have you seen this little symbol on your smartphone? I bet you have, just haven't paid attention. Every time you have voicemail, this little symbol comes up. You know what this is the picture of? An old cassette recorder. That's, remember cassettes? It hasn't been that long ago. I remember cassettes. I remember 8-track. I remember uh, records. Not the wax one. They were made out of vinyl and plastic. But nonetheless, this is a recording because answering machines, when they first came out, ran on cassettes. So voicemail and recordings were on cassettes. So it's stuck. And this little symbol represents a recording. So what is the meaning of the words electrocardiogram? Electro, electricity. Cardio, heart, gram, recording. So it's a recording of heart electrical activity. What does that suggest? Well, it suggests that the heart runs on electricity. Well, it does. It's an amazing thing. So the funny thing about this is, is that we're able to put little stickies or attach wires to the human body and be able to read that electricity. All of you have done EKGs already in the back over there or have seen them done or have seen movies where EKGs were running going beep, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So how is it that you connect wires to the human body and be able to see what happens electrically in the heart? Well, we'll talk about that. So it's an interesting thing. Before I teach you more about electrocardiograms, I have to teach you a little bit about the heart. Are you guys ready? First things first. What sound does the heart make when it beats? Does anyone know? Lub dub? That's too smart. Lub dub is actually the sounds of your valves opening and closing. But in a more simplistic manner, what sounds does it make? Boom boom. Boom boom. Not boom, but boom boom. Actually, I like to call it ba boom. So there's a ba sound and a Boom sounds. By the way, what sounds more powerful, the ba or the boom? The boom. The boom. The boom. <laughs> Very nice. Now, I want to caution you and I want to warn you here a little bit. What I'm teaching you here is medical school stuff. This is not some rinky-dink medical assistant type of education that you're getting. You're getting stuff that the students in medical schools are getting. This is not, they don't get it until their second or third year of medical school. Some of them don't understand this until they're finished. So, since the fact that I've taught in all these places and I understand this stuff 
implicitly, I'm here to tell you that I'm going to make you understand this in the next hour at most. Mm -hmm. It's very easy. <coughs> and you know what? I'm here to tell you something, and I'm going to show you something quickly, then we'll move on. You know what this is? EKG. Yeah, it's the EKG tracing. And let me show you something really quick. You see this guy right over here? Mm -hmm. That's the bot. You see this right over here? Yes. Boom. See how simple that is? Mm -hmm. Really easy, isn't it? Now, they don't call it scientifically by the boom. <laughs> I'll go one step further. I'll teach you one other thing really quick. You know what this is right over here? So, the EKG runs like this. Ba-boom! Break. And then it starts again. Ba, boom, ah, break. And throughout your life until you croak. Ba-boom, ah, ah. That's when it's over. Right? But until it goes ba-boom, ah, uh, break, ba-boom, ah, uh, break, ba-boom, ah, uh, break, you're in good shape. And that's what needs to happen. So now you understand 50% of interpreting electrocardiograms. The other 50% is just a little bit of information. And the rest is easy. Ready to move on? Okay. I'm going to draw for you a diagram of the heart. Look at the word diagram. Do you see any similarities with anything else that you see? Gram. Gram. So the word diagram is related to the word electrocardiogram. So that means a diagram is a recording or a picture of something, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Now the question is, what is the prefix dia? Does anybody know? Yeah. Huh? Know. Does anybody know what the prefix dia means? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Interesting words are related to this. Diagnosis. Uh, oh, I like this one. Diarrhea. <laughs> Do you see any similarities between these words? Diagram, diagnosis, diarrhea? Yeah, My kids come home from school and they sing the diarrhea song. Does anybody know that song? <laughs> no. You know, I can't remember it. They, they, they're like a chorus of people singing the diarrhea song. All right, so the prefix dia. Does anybody know the meaning of the word diagnosis, by the way? Anybody know what diagnosis means? It's a phenomenal medical term. What is a diagnosis? Like you go see a doctor and says, Steve, I'm sorry, I have to give you a diagnosis. You're insane. Yes. So what did the doctor just give me? And based on what? A result. The results? Okay, I got, so diagnosis is results. Anybody else want to give me anything, what the meaning of the word diagnosis is? Testing. Testing. So we got results. We got testing, so testing must lead to results. Anything else? Any other guesses? The meaning of the word? Who came up with an ugly ass word like diagnosis? Condition. Condition? Condition. Very nice. Who's in the billing and coding class here? Everybody? No. Yeah. Not everybody, huh? Well, if you're learning medical terminology as part of medical billing and coding, you might know a few things. Look at the word diagnosis. It's made up of prefix dia, root, gn, and suffix osis. Medical terminology is a brilliant language. It's a separate language. It's not something that doctors invented in order to sound snooty. It's not. It's not anything to make anybody feel stupid. Medical terminology is a comprehensive language that allows you to say a lot of words in one word. It's a compact language. Compact. Very compact. And the word diagnosis is a tremendous, um, how should I say, example of it all. None of you were able to give me a real meaning of the word diagnosis, but you will in a second. Prefix dia means complete. Also means thorough. And it also means through. GN means knowledge. Suffix osis means abnormal. Uh huh. So, can anyone now give me 
and translate for me the word diagnosis. Complete knowledge Complete knowledge of abnormal condition. So check out that word. One ugly word, diagnosis, one word, small, means complete or thorough knowledge of an abnormal condition. Isn't that the truth? You're sick with something, you don't know what it is, but you know it's something that's not normal. You go see the doctor, the doctor runs tests, comes up with all sorts of results, then thinks about it a little bit, at least you hope, and they come up with their understanding of your abnormal condition. By the way, the meaning of the word diarrhea, we already know that it's made up of prefix dia, which means complete thorough or through. Rhea means flow. Doesn't say anything about excessive. It just simply means either flow through or thorough flow or a complete flow. Any which way you want to slice it. If you've had diarrhea, you know that it's true. <laughs> Can you tell me what diagnosis means again? You can tell me what it means. Complete knowledge of abnormal condition. All you got to do is put it together. So what's a diagram then? What's a diagram? Complete, complete, complete picture. Hello? If I give you a diagram of this office, you'll have a complete picture of what it looks like. So I'm, I'm about to give you a diagram of the heart. Are you ready? <laughs> Don't, or don't you feel better knowing? Uh, don't even but, say yes. By the way, do you know any words that are uh, interesting to us in medicine that uh, that feature prominently root GN? Let me show you a couple of words while you're writing. I'll show you one more that you all know. You just haven't thought about it. Benign, malignant, recognize. Do you see that they all contain the root GN? I bet you when you either learn English or when you are learning to talk, to speak the language, what does it mean to recognize somebody? Well, interesting. Suffix I-Z-E means process of doing something. Prefix re means do it again, replay, redo, reassess. That's right. And cogno or GN means to know. So recognize simply means process of knowing somebody again. Hey, I've seen you before and now I know you again. I recognize you. Malignant and benign. These are words that belong to cancer. Benign, Benny and GN. Bueno, benefits, benefactor, good. Benign simply means good knowledge. Malignant, mal. If you speak Spanish or French or any Romance language, mal, mal or English, malnutrition, malabsorption, malfeasance, malice, means bad. Bad news. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. That tumor is malignant. It is bad news. What did you say, I see? Process of doing something. Patronize. Socialize. Uh... Glamorize, pasteurize, huh? Memorize. 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 That's right. Process of committing something to memory. You see, language is a is a wonderful art. If you understand languages, you command power. English is one of those languages that we take for granted, but words do have meanings. All set with this? Let's move on to the heart. I'm going to give you a diagram of the heart. It's really easy, you know. Obviously, I'm not going to give you a whole crash course on, on cardiology. I mean, there are people who go to school for eight years, then they go for a residency and fellowships that last, you know, between five and eight years more. So people spend between 13 and 16 years just learning this stuff. Then they get paid fairly decent money, but it's certainly not worth the investment. But the fact of the matter is, you're going to know a lot if you simply pay attention and choose to review this material afterwards. So the heart looks like this. That's the diagram of the heart.
the heart can be subdivided into four distinct locations. Top, bottom, bottom middle, left, right. and right. Having drawn this, did you by any chance notice that I put left on the right and right on the left? Well, I really didn't. Because when you study anatomy, left belongs to the patient. Mm -hmm. That's my left. That's my right, not yours. It's mm -hmm. the other way around. Imagine a dead body in front of you. <laughs> By the way, if you ever look in, in, in medical books that study medicine and anatomy, instead of left, they have a marker CI, SI, and DE, instead of left or right. You know why? SI is short for sinister. DE is short for dexter. What's sinister? Evil. Evil. And dexter? Righteous and good. <laughs> for this specific reason, they used to beat the crap out of people who were left-handed and make them right with their right. For this specific reason, when you get married, you're supposed to get off on the right, right foot. foot. When you get up in the morning and you're in a bad mood, some people will say, did you get off on the wrong foot this morning? Remember who came up with a study of anatomy? Catholic monks. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. So, a few generalizations. Top, bottom, left, right. So, top. Top is in, bottom is out. Left is clean, right is dirty. Please write that down. I'm generalizing. Top in, bottom out. Left clean, right dirty. Top in, bottom out. Left clean, right dirty. Once you write it down, let's say it together with Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a TV show. Say it together with Steve. <laughs> and so, are you ready? Say it together with me three times. You'll never forget it. Ready? Top in, clean. bottom, bottom out. out, left clean, clean. Right, right dirty. Ready. Once again, top, top in, in, bottom, bottom out. out, left clean, clean. Right, right dirty. Ready. One more, top, top in, in, bottom, bottom out. out, left clean, clean. Right, right dirty. Ready. I'm going to press a button. Beep. It's now forever in your memory. You will never forget it. <laughs> top in, bottom out, left clean, right dirty. I'm talking about blood. Blood comes in to the heart on top. It comes out of the heart on the bottom. Left side of the heart handles clean blood. Right side of the heart handles dirty blood. How is that? Oh, I'm going to show you. Are you ready? Watch this. I'm going to draw a pipeline. You have to use your imagination just a little bit. So a pipeline goes out from the bottom left. And you know where it goes? I'm going to draw a picture here. It's really cool. You're going to love this. What do you think I drew? Body. body. I drew a, a body. So to the body, I send out clean blood. So I'm going to draw, you know what? I'm going to draw little arrows. Please pretend and use your imagination that you know full well that the heart is inside the body, in the chest. Mm -hmm. It's not actually outside and it's not bigger than the body. <laughs> this is just a diagram. <laughs> What's body going to do with clean blood? Like, for example, this morning, and by the way, I started teaching at 6 a.m., so I went out of my house with relatively clean clothes on, mm -hmm. and by now, I'm already experiencing the wear and tear that my body is doing to this particular garment, and it doesn't smell as good as it did early this morning, and neither do I. So, pretend that clean blood went out from the heart from the left side, and it's now making its way to the body. What's the body going to do with my clean blood? Dirt. It's going to make it dirty. You're absolutely right. I'm going to put a little recycling sign over here. <laughs> and guess where is my dirty blood going to go back to? Please tell me. To the heart. To the heart. To the heart. Just to look, the look, right. look at these four words and generalize them. Right side where? Top or bottom? 
Top. Top. Because top is in and right is dirty. So I got dirty blood coming out. I'm going to go back to my top right because top is in and right is dirty, right? Mm -hmm. See how easy this is? It's very, that's why this is ex extremely important for you to know. Now, guess what? The heart does not want dirty blood. So you know what? It's going to ship it out. I'm going to get rid of this. So I'm going to go from here to the bottom. And from the bottom, so this is my bottom right. What does that mean? Out. Out what? Bottom right. So bottom. out, right bottom is, dirty. Dirty. so dirty blood is out. Okay, good. So I'm going to draw one more pipe. <coughs> and I'm going to send it out to this interesting place here. Now. Something magical is going to happen in this place over here. Yes. My blood is going to get cleaned up right over here. Yes. So we'll call it the cleaners. That's that long. Blood cleaners. I haven't gotten to that yet. You're too smart. Just wait. <laughs> so once my blood got cleaned up, where am I going to turn it? The only place that's not open yet. That's not open yet. That's my top left. In clean, right? Top is in, left is clean. So my clean blood is going to come from there to here. Bam. And now the heart says, oh, goody, 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 clean blood. I got nothing to do with it anyway. I'm going to send it out over here and back out to the body again. Mm -hmm. Look at this. And now the cycle is complete. <laughs> now. We don't have this place in the body called the cleaners, but we do have this place called the lungs. Lungs clean up the blood. They get rid of carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, and put in oxygen. Clean means oxygen, Dirty means with carbon dioxide. Do you understand? Yes. I just want to show you something really quick. Do you know what this is right over here? Oxygen. Oxygen. Do you know what this is? Uh, Carbon dioxide. Now, check this out. I just want to show you something. You want to see a magic trick? What do I have now? Oxygen. And what do I have now? Carbon. Carbon dioxide. Carbon is the most abundant um, uh, atom in the world. It's, it makes up dirt. We're made of carbon. If you read the Bible, right, we know we're made out of dirt. And it's true. So carbon, when you make oxygen dirty, you simply add carbon to it. To get rid of carbon, you, to clean it up, you just need to take away the carbon. And you are left with oxygen again. Chemistry. <laughs> it's amazing. So, this is the diagram of not just the heart, but of your circulatory system. Mm -hmm. This is your entire cardiovascular system. Now, I want to sh tell you, share a little bit more with you. We have two different types of blood vessels in the body. They are arteries and they are veins. veins. Do you know the difference? Don't worry, I'm going to tell you. Arteries take blood away from the heart. Veins, I should say, arteries are blood vessels that take blood away from the heart. Veins are blood vessels that return blood to the heart. That's it. This statement is true 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you a question. And you know what? I'm going to get a, a 
couple of reward tokens for my office. Hold on. <laughs> To sign the attendance. Okay, so I have the, I have some rewards. I would like to ask a logical question. <clears throat> Can you tell me what blood vessel this is? Arteries. First one gets it right. Catch. Ready? No, no. Come on. <laughs> I got it. You got it. Yes. <laughs> Very nice. Why was it an artery? Because they transport the clean blood. I didn't say anything about clean. Give me the, the, give me the dollar back. The, based on this definition, takes blood, Take blood away, away from, from the, heart. the heart. I'll tell you why you were wrong. Tell me something. What type of blood vessel is this? Um, that's... No? That's artery. It's an artery. Why yes. is it an artery? Because the blood is going away the from the lung. heart. Yes. But what blood does it carry? Clean or dirty? Dirty. dirty. There's your exception. All the other arteries carry clean blood, but that's that one exception in the body. So the only truthful statement about arteries is that they take blood away from the heart. Now, what blood vessel is this? Well, no, but, huh? That's the vein. That's the vein. Why? Because it's returning blood to the heart. And look at this. This is also a vein, but what kind of blood does it carry? Uh, clean, because we just came from the cleaners. Yes. Do you see how easy this is? No. And it goes, to, uh, no, who said no? <laughs> Come on, just follow the arrows and follow the top end, bottom out, left clean, right dirty. If you follow these, you can't go wrong. And again, if is the video recording still? Yes. I'm going to put it up on, on, on YouTube and I'll send you a link or you can just click my name on there. And uh, you'll find this video up uploaded in a day or two. All right? And if you listen to this, you won't get it wrong. Believe me, this is it. It doesn't get any better than that. Now, I would like to ask you a logical question. But in order to earn this dollar right over here, it's a dollar. It's four quarters. Is that a Haitian dollar? No, it's an American dollar. <laughs> I would like to ask you a logical question. You will have to explain yourself. None of that freebies uh, like, uh, you know, is this an artery or vein? Okay. I want to ask you a question. Which is the largest and the strongest chamber of the heart and why? Based on what you see here. Which one is the largest and the strongest chamber of the heart these would be the chambers. One, two, three, four. Which one is the largest and the strongest? The right, right, the left, top. I need a little bit more specific. If you're saying the right or left, please specify top or bottom. 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 Okay, so we're all in agreement that it's the bottom left. Yes. Now the kicker. Who wants to tell me why is it the largest and the strongest chamber? One person answers. First hand gets it up there. It's a logical question. Why is this chamber, the bottom left, the biggest and the strongest? That's where the heart is. It's what? The heart. No, no, well, it's all the heart. All of this is the heart. Come on, you can do it. Tell me something. Why is it that these people who, uh, uh, who are bodybuilders are so bulky and strong? Not because they take steroids. What's the other reason? Mm. Oh, there is clean arteries is on that side. They work their muscles. Muscles. And they lift heavy weights. Do you have an answer for me, my dear? Because um, the left, the heart is on the left, and the ventricles. I didn't say anything about ventricles. I said nothing. And the heart is on the left, but this entire thing is tilting to the left of the body. But why is the bottom left chamber, why is this guy the biggest and the strongest? Por qué? Por qué? <laughs> why? Because he's doing most of the work pumping the blood. What do you mean? Don't the other ones work? Yeah. But? 
but the heart, because the heart is on that side, it... You're going the wrong direction. <laughs> it's not strong it's the, You can hide it. Huh? What? 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 The picture, the, the picture tells all the answers. The answer is on the picture. Mm. I would never... We can run to the head. Does the head, the blood return to the head? No, it doesn't return to the left, it returns yeah. to the right. Because it's collecting all the dirty blood to fill Left up. side is clean side. Yes. Left is clean. Hey, hey, pay attention. Okay. I'm beginning to feel disrespected. Bad news. All right, I'll explain. Where am I pumping blood from here? To the body. To the entire body. Not just the body. <laughs> It's the entire body. So this whole hulking mass of blubber is receiving clean blood from only one chamber in the heart. This one. This guy is doing most of the dirty work or the clean work for the entire heart. You see, this guy is only pumping next door to the lungs. See, look, heart, lungs. Do I have to do much work? No. Just going next door. But now... I am pumping to the entire body. Let me tell you a little bit of information that you perhaps did not know. If I were to take out all of my blood vessels from the body and string them up and turn them into a string, how long do you think that rope would be? The whole world. Huh? The whole world. The whole world? Isn't that a little excessive? I mean, there's like enough blood vessels in here to make the whole world. Couldn't you tell me like a, like a basketball court or something? Maybe a football field? Yeah, just to say it's going to be really... Like, really long? Yeah. Anybody else wants to get, like, tell me a couple of blocks like from here to the library? Like a mile and a half maybe? Come on, work with me people. Give me something. 12 feet? 12 feet? You know what? You were pretty much in the money, except you were wrong. If I take the planet Earth around its equator, which is 37,000 kilometers, about 22,000 miles, I can take all of the blood vessels from my body, string them up, it would go two and a half times around our planet. So that left chamber of the heart is responsible for pumping all of this blood throughout all the system of blood vessels, and they're tiny. Some of them are minuscule microscopic blood vessels, but they're blood vessels. We're filled. Can you imagine the staggering amount of transportation that we provide for our blood roads? And so imagine if you were in charge of building one road that went around our planet two and a half times. How much money would you need? How much material do you need? And yet we look at this and say, oh, there's nothing miraculous about this human body. The whole damn thing is a freaking miracle. Pardon my French. Two and a half times around the equator. That's amazing. In any case, that's why this chamber of the heart is the biggest and the strongest because it pumps to the entire body. Now, 